can you give me like a insight of of maybe some of the thoughts that that you had maybe in your earlier years maybe when you were a teenager of how it feels like to have bipolar what's like the uh what's going on in your mind when you're going through these 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 manic or depressive phases how does the mind of a bi bipolar person look like well i think you have to go back we have to go back to when uh, i believe my real depression and bipolar journey started and when i was a kid zero to eight everything was great um had a great family life my parents made good money uh had a nice house a lot of friends everything was great and then one saturday i went to the movies with a friend of mine and i got up to go to intermission and a guy grabbed me took me into the restroom and sexually assaulted me uh that's when my world changed and about three months after the assault and i want you to know i never told anybody 30 years i kept it inside of me cause afraid it was my fault. Uh, why did the guy do that to me? Uh, you know, I was—I didn't even know those things could happen. But anyway, uh, so I hated all those years, and the depression started about three months after that. Now, if you talk to a number of psychologists and psychiatrists, you'll get different answers on what can cause depression and bipolar and other mental illnesses uh, there is no exact answer it was probably a combination of uh, genetics plus my uh, sexual assault that drove into the depression but the depression now that goes back got to realize that's 1958 that's 65 years ago and I didn't even know there were people who talked to people about their mental problems. And I sure didn't get any help when I was that age. So I had to suffer it through my, by myself. And what it was like was being totally alone uh, in a dark hole and no feelings, no love no desire to do anything. But as you hear what I'm telling you, you cannot imagine the scope of what it's like to go through a massive depression. I could sit here all day and give you all kind of explanations of what it was, but you can't imagine it. It's positively, in my mind, the worst thing that you could ever go through. Uh, it's just debilitating. The only... The only good thing about it is that it only lasts and comes intermittently. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. No, I, I was I was saying okay. Like I was just, I was listening again. So uh, I got bad that first time after the uh, incident, and it lasted two or three months. Then I got better, and I stayed better for a while. Um living normally and then it would hit again and it was pretty brutal it lasted uh all through junior high high school college and when i really hit rock bottom was when i was uh, a year after i graduated from college i wanted to kill myself uh I have always been a big swimmer. I swim laps every day. And when I would get in the pool back then, each stroke, I would say, kill yourself. No, wait a minute. I, I didn't say that right. Something in my mind said, kill yourself. Um, and I had that kind of stuff happen several times where it was a voice outside of my head telling me to harm myself or kill myself or get rid of somebody or whatever it was 
1972, I was diagnosed as clinically depressed. Uh, but none of the treatments worked. The medications didn't do any good. So six years later, in 1978, they changed my uh, diagnosis to bipolar disorder. I was given lithium, and I started my journey back in 1978. And it still took another 40 years. And Steve, uh, when you're going through those depressive phases, you said that you had thoughts of, of suicide. What was, what, what do you think was telling you that? Did you feel like you were less than everyone else because of, of what happened to you in a the movie theater? What, were you just depressed because of, of that situation that has happened and did you keep having like negative thoughts? How was that? Well, I never equated it to what happened to me when I was nine. Uh, it was just something that was happening and I had no control over it, and it just beat me up to where I was nothing but uh, sleeping all day every day and curled up in the fetal position and couldn't do anything. Uh, and, you know, back then, that's still in the early to mid-'70s, I had never even heard of bipolar disorder, so I had no idea what was going on. Then my mother, who had had problems of her own mentally, recognized what I was going through and got me set up with my first psychiatrist, and that was the beginning of, well, that was six years before I got the lithium. It was the beginning of my therapy that lasted forever. Mm -hmm. And okay, you touched a little bit about your therapy. How did you slowly get to the point where you finally found some motivation, some light at the end of the tunnel that made you become of made you become more of what you were, more of like yourself? What what really helped help get you out of that that depressive state? Well, it was really a combination of the one on one therapy and my psychiatrist became my support system. My parents didn't have a clue what to do with me. They never faced anything like this. My sister didn't know. My brother didn't know. So he became my support system. And I had a terrible time up until they gave me the lithium. I mean, I was couldn't keep a job. Uh, I would quit. I would uh, be. I was hospitalized. All these things happened between the time I was diagnosed with depression and the time they figured out it was bipolar disorder. Uh, so when I got the lithium is when I started my journey back. But as I said, it was just a starting place, and I had to deal with it for another 40 years. It's a long, exhausting process. There is no cure for bipolar disorder. Um, many people have to rely on medication, and a lot of us get on cocktails, which means we have more than one or two drugs, psych drugs, that help us get through the day. Um, but med many people don't get any relief through medication because the medications only work for people about 50% of the time. So they have to rely on things like EMDR, uh, EBT, CBT, uh, intensive output. Uh, I can't think what it is. But anyway, there's a, there's a whole scope of things that people have to go to get relief along with medication if it works for them. Okay. And then with with the lithium, I also suppose people get some side effect. Did you get any side effects of, of, of lithium? Yes, it ruined my kidney. Really? And I had to have a kidney transplant about two years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, because lots of times... But, yeah. let me tell you this. I would never have given up the lithium if it, I would have 
I knew that it could happen, but I was feeling alive again, and I didn't want to trade that just because it might screw up my kidney. That's a choice all of us have to make out there. A lot of the medications have side effects, brutal side effects. Some people gain 50, 60, 70 pounds overnight on the medication. Um, I also, from a medication called uh, Navane, which was an antipsychotic I was on, gave me tardive dyskinesia in my eyelids, which is uncontrollable movements. And they can be anywhere in your body. And they're not reversible. But I was able to get on a Botox treatment, and I've had it for uh, 35 years. But I still would not have corrected what I did just to avoid those uh, bad things that happened. Yeah, yeah, because bipolar is very debilitating because sometimes people give a really bad rap to, you know, big pharma, the pharmaceutical industry, but they don't understand firsthand the benefits that these kind of medications bring because, like you're saying, you would rather risk getting any side effects. You'd rather risk getting side effects because you'd have more control over your life in a sense because yeah. whatever... Absolutely. Yeah, because whatever benefits though the lithium gave you, that was greater than anything that it could, you know, you could say take away. Well, one of the things I compare it to is... Uh, uh, if you have cancer and you got to take chemotherapy, there are a lot of bad results with chemotherapy, getting sick and having a terrible time. Would you rather die? So the comparisons are the same, just different modalities. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's completely correct. And you're saying that the lithium doesn't, or the medication doesn't completely take away uh, the 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 the, press, the the pressure or the symptoms that bipolar brings out. So, is the rest of of that just in your own will? You have to kind of fight that off, um, or how how does that work? Because it does It's not like you take a take the medication. Oh, all of a sudden everything goes away. There's still some you could say internal mental work you have to do to kind of combat those the the those depressive um, ideas or symptoms. Correct. Well. Um... I no longer take the meth, the uh, lithium, because it did destroy my kidney, so I had to give it up. And that was about five, about 10 or 15 years ago, after I'd been on it for over 20 years. And I went on a, a different drug called Lamictal, and it worked just as well as the lithium. But I needed something else because I had terrible ruminations. In other words, things would go into my mind, and they'd just spin and spin and spin and... I'd worry over everything and apologize. It was awful. That's what it was like, even with the lithium. And then a new psychiatrist, my old one died, a new psychiatrist gave me another drug in the year 2000, and it's called Paxil, and it's still being used today. And that cut out most of the ruminations. Funny that... Uh, just yesterday, I had an attack for probably the first time in years uh -huh. for one day. And I had to stay in bed all day. I have no idea where that attack came from. But as quickly as it came and stayed for a day, it went away. So you're never cured from bipolar. It's going to be with you all the time. Um, and that leads to the fact that too many people in this country and probably around the world are falling through the cracks when it comes to getting treatment for mental illness. And there's a lot of reasons for that. The number one reason, I think, is because our mental health system is so bad. You know, they'll, they'll cover damn near everything in a physically, but when it comes to mental illness, uh, they've taken away the, the uh, ability for psychiatrists and psychologists to uh, accept insurance and still make a living because of the low amounts they get paid. Uh, they refuse 
a lot of people who are on disability or who can't afford to go to a psychiatrist because they're charging a couple hundred bucks an hour, well, they send them to clinics and the clinics are overwhelmed and it's just a mess the way this country handles our problem. And you got to realize that 20% of Americans are mentally ill or suffer from mental illness. That's millions of people. So it is a huge problem. That statistic, by the way, is worldwide. And our system is terrible. And what I have done to try to, in my own little way, alleviate some of those problems is to facilitate two mental health support groups here in Phoenix. And I, my, my groups are always full. People from all walks of life come to them. And people from all walks of life are not getting the help they need, again, because of the system. Uh, the amount of sexual, physical, mental abuse at a young age is driving people to have real serious mental problems. And that problem is just skyrocketing out of control. Uh, I see these people. People come to my groups all the time, and the stories they tell about what their parents did to them or Uncle Buck or Sammy down the street, you know, it's just, I went through it, but only once. A lot of these people go through it for years. And, it, you know, the government really just doesn't do a whole lot, in my opinion, to try to uh, make things different.